Hi, uh, I'm Johnny Wilder, and this is my second attempt at the Zip Bang Wow Lunch and Learn. There was a problem with the recording, the audio of the recording. I had two microphones set up. One was a boundary microphone set up on the table, which was there to capture the opening of all the potato chip bags, and it did so, so well. It was beautiful. I was personally somebody else won the webby this year but i'm pretty sure i'm up for the webby next year for the the way those uh potato chip bags pop and crackle it's just a thing of beauty and uh, i'd like to thank all the little people that got me up to this level secondly i forgot to i was adjusting the volumes getting my webby in order with the potato chip bags, I forgot to reactivate the lavalier microphone in the mix. I I had my eyes on the prize, but I I didn't think about you, the listener, who's going to be listening and maybe might want to know what was going on around because I tend to focus on the important things and leave the essentials to my my uh my second unit but uh but clearly i can't afford a second unit and i fucked up i screwed up i succeeded in a non-traditional fashion so we're just going to go right into a kind of a a recreation if you will of the podcasting lunch and learn from my home in beautiful Capitol Hill, Washington. Uh, right in kind of this area here. Good Lord, this is hard to do. Anyway, right around in this area where I live. And you can hear the buses. Aren't they gorgeous? Hopefully you can hear the buses or, you know, maybe I forgot to reactivate the boundary mic on the porch out there. We're just going to go right straight into the fun. Uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to have to reach over here because, again, I can't afford a second unit. But we're going to go right here to Alan Rickman behind me. Oh, wait, no, it's kind of in the, uh, kind of in the thing. I'm just going to pretend like I'm holding it like a bushel basket. That's Alan Rickman. Uh, And he said, and I'm going to read off the thing, and it's a human need to be told stories. The more we're governed by idiots, and I'm not going to use his voice, although I do a pretty mean Alan Rickman impression. The more we're governed by idiots and have no control over our destinies, Mr. Potter, uh, and the more we need to tell stories to each other about who we are, why we are, where we come from, and what might be possible. That's podcasting. Alan Rickman just always the the trendsetter basically telling us what podcasting was you know like 10 years after it happened podcasting uh here at zip bang wow uh we uh we do podcasting and we sell our services to people uh if you know if you can afford us uh there's a i would like to quote the 18 but i i can't right now uh podcasting it's so much easier i'm gonna see how that works editing that i'm gonna dust off final cut pro see how that works podcasting it's so much easier than we make it look and i'm not entirely sure if maybe that's because i make it look really hard and not because i do such a good job i think i just do it in a way that people wonder what all those extra motions are who am i i'm johnny wilder you uh, probably have never heard of me before but you've heard of some of the work that I've done. I worked on a small newspaper out of Madison, Wisconsin called The Onion. Uh, I used to, you know, own it. It was mine. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't anymore. That's a long story. I can't wait to tell it to everybody. Uh, sold that, went to work for a game company, and then uh, with a bunch of my friends, including uh, Andy Splitzer, whose name is Second, we came out to Seattle to uh, start a newspaper called The Stranger, and uh, it did okay. It's, you know, cool. 
and uh, and then there's a supporting cast and crew for Zip Bang Wow, who I like to think of them as a supporting cast and crew, but really they're they're pretty much people who do their own thing really amazingly. And uh, so let's see, on my list was Andre Barefield for teaching me a bunch of cool audio engineering techniques and just basically being a good person. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, Sarah Studer for being such a great, uh, what's the right word? She's, uh, uh, she's a media personality who isn't famous yet. She's famous in uh, her own, her circle, but uh, I really hope uh, someday she'll get the recognition. I don't know. I'm building her up too much, aren't I? She's a really a very good interviewer, uh, and uh, I learn a lot from her every time we work together. And then uh, Steve Johnson, uh, and really the entire uh, pack at the Impact Hub Seattle uh, for giving us a place to work that isn't here in my living room. Uh, bless their hearts. I'm gonna go to the next slide. Just, and there's more people, but uh, this was me saying, uh, ask any questions you want, interrupt me as often as you can. There's a motorcycle outside. Interrupt me as often as you can, but, uh, but I probably won't answer them because I'm gonna be busy telling jokes. That's our logo. We have a logo. It's really more of a mascot. Phase one, there's five phases. This is phase one. And I talked about uh, our equipment as being our our magic spell. Whoa, that's a good one. Uh, uh, Capitals downtown, <laughs> right on Olive Way. It's beautiful. Uh, I talked about our tools as being magic swords, and showed all of my magic swords. Uh, and there was a Zelda reference. Uh, and said uh, to all the nice people that were there, uh, thank you for coming, by the way. You will have your own kit of magic swords, and they won't be the same as mine. Don't run out and bought exactly what I bought, because I spent way too much money. And then I told a joke about Amazon, which did not go over well. It was really, it fell pretty flat. It was basically, don't buy from Amazon, buy from local stores. Wow, I forgot Amazon's a local store. Whew. Boy, oh boy, people really like Amazon. Uh, that or they feel like they've sunk a lot of money into Amazon Prime and not buying there is kind of a waste of that. But really, you get the free TV and all the music you can listen to. So I don't know, really. I don't know. It seems like a good deal, but I don't have one because nobody's offered me a free one. Uh, so our slide here talks about microphones, microphones and how they convert kinetic sound waves, physics into electromagnetism. That's pretty cool. That's what microphones do. And, uh, and they get to wear funny hats. And then uh, an interface, which is a digitizer, it digitizes that electromagnetism into cyberspace. Cyberspace then gets uh, gets uh, avatared, James Cameron style, into uh, digitals. <laughs> gets avatared into digitals, and gives you tools to edit the hackem hackem microphones. So. Apple used to do this thing where they sold good, better, and best. They only sold three. Steve Jobs was amazing. What a guy. And an, an amazing asshole. And also, what a guy. Uh, when he's not, if, he's, if you're not the person he's yelling at, or he was yelling at at the time, he was a great guy until his withering gaze focused on you. They sold three Macintoshes. Good, better, and best. And that's what I tried to do here poorly. Microphones, uh, there's so many of them. There's, uh, Andre has like 250 of them, he said. I don't know, he said. Uh, he probably has 600. Uh, so you can go crazy on the microphones uh, because they all have different sound profiles. Uh, 
But really, it, it's my, the, the gist of my presentation was that the best podcast is the one that you just op uploaded and that people can listen to, not the great, you know, audio lab killer, radio lab killer that, uh, that will never end up getting produced because it's too much work and costs too much money. So, microphones. Uh, the good is the phone you have in your pocket. And I held up a phone very much like this one and said, this phone could be a portable podcasting device. And my original uh, beta version of this, of this was me actually creating a podcast on the phone. And I realized that was just going to be so boring that uh, I decided to scrap it. Thank goodness I did because this is so exciting. Better is just the whole world of consumer electronics. And then a pro tip, which I forgot to mention, is we live in a world where gaming stuff is, gaming is what's propelling consumer electronics forward these days. Uh, there's so much, there are so many really cutting edge people who are live streaming themselves playing video games. It's another local business, Twitch TV, really cool. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people who uh, sell consumer electronics around that. So if you're looking for audio visual equipment, that's the arena which is gonna give you a, a gigantic amount of, uh, they call it prosumer. Uh, you're going to get a lot of stuff for a lower price because they're marketing to high school kids, basically. And then you could spend a lot of money. You really could just spend a lot of money. I went on and on about that. Good thing I get to record this over again. Interfaces, your, your uh, digital interface, your digitizer, as they say. You buy a good one, just whatever, you know, there, I had a little thing, it just plugs into your phone that I found, Sarah gave to me and told me to throw away, but I didn't. Better, uh, a USB audio mixer, I have many of them, the one that I have right here on the ground, I'm not going to pick it up because it'll break, is right here, and it's tiny, it's portable, battery powered, very cool, uh, it's what the little microphone here is plugged into. And then it plugs into the other thing, and then it plugs in over there, and there's a thing, and somebody has to hand crank a generator. Very cool. Uh, I have like six more in a stack, you know, in the basement. Uh, and then best is, do you really want to spend that much money? I mean, it basically, you know, in the movies, when they're like, you know, the band is like sitting around in the recording studio, that's basically a gigantic expensive podcasting kit. You don't want to go there, trust me. Digital audio workstations. So the, actually, that's kind of a manual workstation. It's really not a. It's not an interface, but there's an interface part of it. A digital audio workstation is like a. It's a computer simulation of that recording studio thing, with all the mixing levers. That's what it is. It's, it's except it's digital. It's cyberspace. Uh, there are some that are entirely on websites because HTML5 and JavaScript is amazing. And uh, there are some of them, zoom.us, zencaster.com, squadcast.fm is a new one in beta. It also does video. Uh, they, they help you uh, con connect with interview guests uh, and then... Uh, records you having an interview over voice over IP and then spits out those files so you can edit them in your digital audio workstation. It's very cool. Very cool some of the stuff people are doing these days. Better is something, you know, or, although maybe you take those and then you load them into GarageBand or Audacity, which is the open source version of that, or Hindenburg, which is uh, the, it's sort of a, a digital, uh, it's a, it's a, it's not as feature rich as some of the bigger ones because it's made for journalists, uh, audio journalists, uh, for editing their stuff. Uh, and then best is, uh, something like Logic Pro X, which is what I use, which really is just GarageBand Pro. 
uh, Apple hasn't paid me to tell people that it's not, so I'm going to keep calling it GarageBand Pro. Pro Tools uh, is cross-platform, so PC and Mac, and maybe Linux, who knows, I don't know. Reaper is another one, very scary name. And then we had Show and Tell, which was me pointing at things and going, this is a thing, and I bought it, and it cost about this much, and you should buy one like it, because we have a lot of stuff, and most of it you don't need. Phase two. Phase two. If it were easy being fabulous, everyone would be doing it. This is about, so there's two, There's I had two ideas about editing that uh, we edit ourselves and then we edit the recordings of ourselves. And the first part is to avoid editing ourselves because editing ourselves is what stops us from being amazing. So really, my the takeaway from my event, if there is a takeaway and if it was an event, is be yourself you're amazing and don't don't be so discontent with who you are today that you don't show us who that is because you you, you want to be who you're going to be tomorrow boy there's got to be a better way of saying that uh, don't let don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Don't let what you aspire to stop you from being what you are. Because what you are is enough. What you are is amazing. You made it this far. You're my hero. So let's make a podcast. There are plenty of reasons to be afraid. Uh, stage fright. I have it bad. Croaking frog voice. I have an amazing croaking frog, frog voice uninteresting personality crazy uninteresting uh if you have panic attacks if you're afraid people who won't love you for who you are and if you're self-obsessed like i am there's ways that that can be managed um there's there's ways you can turn all of those things into uh good things about you they're not necessarily bad things about you they're good things about you uh, you can turn that fright into courage. People don't have courage. If people who aren't afraid are also not courageous. I don't know. That sounded better in my head. <laughs> people who have to face their fears become more courageous. So if you're afraid, it just gives you an opportunity to be courageous. If you have a croaking frog voice like me, authenticity is the new sexy being who you are, being imperfect, being fragile, being vulnerable. People, if you can do that in public, people will see it and they will respect it. And I will talk more about that later. Uninteresting personalities. Well, that's not really, that's, you know, a thing. And, uh, and sometimes we all want to talk about ourselves. We all want that. We all wait for that opportunity to talk about me. Uh, that's okay. That's half of what podcasting is. Uh, a lot of it is me giving other people that opportunity. But I get to look and see, hey, that's what everybody else wants to do. They don't come on my show to talk about me unless I'm Mark Marin, and then lots of people come on his show to talk about Mark Marin. I've heard. I've never actually watched the show. We're just going to go on. Uh, anyway. Uh, there's a thing that I, there's a YouTube, there's a TED Talk <laughs> by Celeste Headley. Uh, it's a TED Talk about how to do an interview, and I learned a lot from it, and I put it on our blog. So you should go there and listen to it. Also, I'm from the Midwest, and from the Midwest, all of our sentences use the word should. Don't take it personally. It's just what we do. My extensive experience podcasting has taught me that podcasters happily share their secrets of success. If you have a question, just ask, and I'll do my best to share it with you, but I'm a nerd, and my best is sometimes completely unintelligible. Just let me know. Say, 
Ask me more questions about that. Sharpen your interviewing skills. Uh, you want to know? Sometimes I have the. Sometimes I have the answer. If I don't have the answer, I might not. I might know someone who does. Uh, I don't always have the answer. Maybe we can figure it out ourselves. Maybe figure, we can figure it out together. People, po- uh, yeah. People podcast and are interviewed on podcasts out of a sincere de- desire to understand and be understood. It's what we want as human beings. Uh, we all feel misunderstood, and we all want an opportunity to correct the record. This is the default state of humanity, sharing our experiences with each other. We invented language to so we could talk to each other. Actually, we, I don't know if we, we discovered language meaning. Whatever. The important thing is, is that we talk to each other about our experiences, and ultimately, we negotiate together to agree upon an experience that we both feel is valid. And in so doing, Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights got written. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. I don't know what that last part means. But regardless of the frontier, we get to, we have a freedom to speak about what's going on in our world. Uh, and people aren't allowed to tell us to, to, to not talk about it. And you know who the biggest tyrant is? The tyrant inside myself. So stick it to the man or the whatever's inside of me. Stick it to the whatever's inside of me. I'm going to talk about what's going on in my world. You don't have to listen. There's nothing in there about you having to listen. But I get to talk. Phase three. This, the last one is about editing yourself. This one is about editing the recording you made of yourself. And maybe uh, be a little surgical about it. Editing might be a bloody trade, but knives aren't the exclusive property of butchers. Surgeons use them too. So let's let's play doctor. <laughs> Editing. So this is a, there's a lot of work going on in this slide. Editing. The, again, the three things, right? Good, better, best. Except this time it's easy, difficult, and hardcore, which are I think the three. Uh, Difficulty levels in Diablo 2. Easy, let you be you. Just be yourself. Dear Lord, I heard somewhere that authenticity is the new sexy, and it's got to be true because I heard it somewhere. Difficult, add some music. Cut out some awkward pauses. Uh, You can do that. It's really pretty simple. I can't teach you how to do that in a a lunch and learn. It requires sitting down in front of a computer. So... That's a tough one. I, there's oh, you know what you should do? You should go to YouTube, and there's people that make videos that show you how to do things. That's how I learned. It's really cool. Uh, honestly, you should do that. But I would prefer it if you uh, uh, sent me an email, Johnny at zipbangwow.com, and I could uh, charge you money to sit down with you and sherpa you through the process. Honestly. I think it's still worth the money, even though you could do it on YouTube, but you don't get to sit next to me. Hardcore. Uh, So there's a little video blip here from uh, uh, Two Dope Queens and uh, uh, this guy, Jad, who's the guy who started Radiolab. It's very funny, and it's linked on our blog. Or you could just just, uh, search for uh, Radio Two Dope Queens meet Radiolab. Very funny. Uh, but it, but it talks about this this guy uh, Jad, who does Radio Lab. He start got to start with this American Life, amazing uh, producer. And uh, they put a lot of work into their show, and it's clearly worth every moment that they put into it and every dollar they spend on it. Because uh, those shows are amazing. This American Life and Radio Lab are amazing. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tudor Queens is not the same. <laughs> They're both amazing. Uh, you being you 
is amazing. You're good enough. You don't have to be overproduced. So there's this thing like from old school uh, recording, audio and uh, music recording. And there's a, a big body of music that there's this group of people that are pr called producers. And, and so band gets a contract and they go into a studio and they get set up with a producer. There are great producers out there who will take your sound and make you sound even better. They'll, they'll do things to, to your music. They'll put filters on your guitar and on your, your drums that will make them sound better than you thought they could. Some of these people overproduce. They do too much. And if you just look up, you know, overproduce, it's a thing. It's really a thing, I swear to God. Uh, it's sort of like beating a dead horse. <laughs> Uh, there's people, they just do too much. Don't be that guy. Just do the right amount of editing. And that right amount is the amount you're able to do for yourself or you're be able, able to afford to s s spend on somebody else uh, or the amount of time you're able to invest in learning how to be a, a good editor, the time you're in, able to invest in into... Uh, sitting down in front of your recording. Is it good enough? Really? It probably is. Those ums and ers, uhs, you know, some, you know, authenticity is the new sexy, I heard. Or you could just use Autoduck. Uh, I spent a long time explaining Autoduck. This is Autoduck. It's uh, Logic Pro X doesn't have Autoduck. I don't know. Reaper probably doesn't. Pro Tools probably doesn't. If they had them, they, I don't know. Maybe they all do, and I just haven't found it yet. But uh, but Audacity, which is free software, free as in beer, free as in libre, has auto duck. Ducking is, it it's more like duck, but I like to think of it as quack quack. And I made a joke about how this looks like a duck, but apparently it doesn't. But to me, it does. It's got kind of like the bill, like if you look at the waveform, it's not actually a waveform, but if you look, it's kind of like a duck bill, kind of, nobody gets it, do they? I'm the only one. I saw things others couldn't. Autoduck, it's a thing. Go to, it's Audacity, it's free software, you can download it and play with it. That's how I learn most stuff, I download it and play with it. Um, er, uh. There's professional podcast editors. I should look into doing that. They earn a lot of money uh, cutting out people's ums and ers and uhs. Uh, it can be done. It's just very time consuming. Uh, you can have them removed from the recording by an editor, or you can remove them by just not saying them, or you can learn to love them. Uh, the reason to learn to love them is when people are doing it, it's because they're searching. There's, there's it's verbal stuff they do while they're thinking. And honestly, when people are thinking and they're being quiet, uh, that doesn't play well on your podcast, right? Because it's just silence. If people are umming and erring, then you've got a, an audio clue that something's going on. Somebody's home. They're just lost inside the labyrinth. I don't know. <laughs> I just I didn't say that during the thing. I just made that up right then. Uh, ultimately, you're going to want to find peace. This is a Zen thing. You're going to want to find peace in a mixture of all three. Uh, find peace, grasshopper. Learning to love imperfection. It's basically our secret sauce at Zip Bang Wow because I'm so imperfect. Uh, in fact, I I I kind of make imp I take imperfection to a new level. I I I I've <laughs> I have uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, wabi sabi, it's a thing. So like you. Uh, it's a thing, it's a Japanese word, wabi-sabi, although it's originally Chinese. So, uh, wabi-sabi uh, is about nurturing all that is authentic. 
by acknowledging three simple realities. Nothing lasts, nothing is finished, and nothing is perfect. Uh, and it's a feeling that we have that old things, broken things that have been repaired, sometimes broken things that haven't been repaired, things that lasted, things that survived, we find them beautiful. And it's not because they're broken, it's because they survived. Uh, there's a, a line from Raiders of the Lost Ark where Belloc and Professor Jones are sitting in a cafe in Cairo and Belloc pulls out a watch and, and he says, you see this watch? I bought it in the, I bought it in the market here for a dollar. It's worthless. But be bury it in the sand for a thousand years and dig it up and it's priceless. And that's Wabi Sabi. It's because it survived. It's because it shouldn't be here, but it is. Patience. Uh, my personal journey with podcasting means I had to learn patience. I'm not a patient person. Uh, I'm, I have to practice it every day. Uh, and this is a quote by Epictetus about patience. And basically, if you want a fig, you got to plant a tree and wait for it to grow. And then you got to wait for spring and the flowers and they're pretty, but they're not figs. And then you got to wait for, okay, there's figs, but I got to wait for it to get ripe. <sighs> That's patience. <laughs> uh, relaxation. Uh, when you're recording, uh, I don't know if I said this, but there's this thing I learned when I was learning how to ride a bike again, that uh, the harder I try to pedal fast, the slower I actually go. Um, and I think there's an anxiety part, part to this where uh, if trying too hard, I use energy trying that there's there's a zen thing here for real uh there's a spiritual thing here for real it's like we use all this energy trying and then we don't have enough energy for doing uh so uh douglas adams wrote a thing about how to fly he said the secret he wrote the secret is to throw yourself at the ground and miss uh and i love douglas adams he was a super swell guy um and I will always wanted to write as good as he did. Uh, so I, I wrote this one. The secret, secret, the secret to relaxation is to wait until you're relaxed and then just keep doing it. Uh, it's cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> uh, relaxation is like any other physical activity. Uh, you warm up first. Uh, you, you, uh, you, don't, you don't lift 400 pounds your first try. Uh, even after you've already lifted 400 pounds, you don't lift 400 pounds cold. You start with, I don't know, I've never lifted 400 pounds, so whatever you start with, you start with that. You work your way up. Uh, and, uh, and the same thing is true about relaxation. Uh, I recommend to people, we talk about sports, you know, tell me what's going on with the local uh, sports team. Or talk about fashion if they're not sports people. Or talk about television if they're not fashion or sports people. Or talk about fashionable sports television. Talk about something they want to talk about. Uh, distract, distract, distract. Um, if you can get people distracted about what's making them anxious, I, I feel like uh, almost always they won't be anxious anymore. Because anxiety is actually, weirdly enough, it's an active process that... Uh, robs us of energy and uh, when we uh, got a thing we're having an emergency you know I always think of sirens I don't think of them as something bad happening I think of them as oh somebody's going to help because 
Whoa! That's somebody on their way to help. That's not a person that's hurt. That's the sound of somebody on their way to help. So it's a good sound. Which is why it's so loud, because they want us to know good things are happening. It's when it's silent that nobody's helping. Uh, talk about it. Uh, anxiety is an active process that robs us of our energy. And uh, so the point is, uh, if we're not actively being anxious, that we're relaxed. I don't know if that's true. I'm not a doctor. This guy, though, he would know. That's Bob Ross. Uh, he's amazing. Uh, I was looking all over the internet for a thing about talent because uh, ultimately everybody's like, oh, you're so talented at this, and I'm not, I, whatever. Nobody said that to me. In my head, I think of people you know, surrounding me and being like, Johnny, you're so good at podcasting. How did you, how did, that ta you must have been born with it. I wasn't born with it. I really hadn't done much of podcasting. I really had done almost no audio engineering at all. Except for once, I uh, rec recorded a <laughs> I'm a bad person. <laughs> I recorded somebody, some local celebrity left us a very angry voicemail, <laughs> voicemail message. And I record that. I recorded it and played it for everybody in the office. And that makes me a bad person because they were right. <laughs> We were assholes. We were bad people. And we deserved every mean word he said about us. And then we made fun of him <laughs> for being angry at us. God, I miss being a kid. <laughs> but Bob Ross is a good human being. And he talked about talent. Talent is a pursued interest. In other words, anything that you're willing to practice, you can do. I have spent my life practicing being mean, and now in my old age, I'm paying for it. Uh, you who hopefully are younger, this is your last chance to straighten up and fly right. <laughs> I regret nothing. Tim Ferriss. Uh, he's like this famous podcasting guy. His podcast gets like 100 million downloads a second. Uh, and he makes like $35 off of each one. So you can imagine what kind of money that is. Uh, he wrote a thing. He was in an interview with this guy, another podcaster guy. Tim Ferriss was on it. And he said, so what was your first podcast like? And according to this, it was a nightmare. It was a tragedy. It's even worse than this one. Uh, so there it is, Tim Ferriss. Uh, didn't even have a name for the podcast. Had to get sloppy drunk because he was so nervous. Not just drunk, but sloppy drunk. And he was and he was recording and he was interviewing his best friend. So yeah, good job there, Tim. But now making money hand over fist as a podcaster could be you. Phase four. Almost there, getting near the end. The Darren's Junior Podcast is something you're listening to on the internet. I think at, during the actual presentation, I started to go a little bit fast here because it was like 4.30 in the afternoon by this time, and I was only, yeah, barely even halfway. The reason why is because of RSS, which stands for Really Simple Syndication. Uh, once upon a time, wild blogs roamed the earth in the 90s. Kind of post, -li well, after live journal. Movable type. Uh, those folks, they were... I really liked them. I had a movable type blog a long time ago. Once upon a time, wild blogs roamed the, roamed the earth. They fed on fertile XML files. RSS is a type of XML file. RSS is a specification for an XML document. Somebody said, hey, what if I add audio instead of text? XML documents, uh, basically there's a header that says what your, what your blog is and then there's uh, listings for each blog post. Um, you can have an attachment for each one of those, a mime attachment. Uh, uh, I don't know, it's a, 
it's an enclosure in Miami. <laughs> There's a thing. I don't. I don't know. I just. I just. I'm reading this out of a book. Uh, anyway, you can have. It's my. When you attach stuff to your email, it's a MIME attachment. It's the same thing with RSS and XML file. You can have an attachment, and the attachment is uh, an audio file. Uh, and the podcast was born. So, yeah, that's how podcasts got made. Uh, somebody said, hey, what if I had audio? Um, why that's good, your listeners can subscribe to it. Uh, that's how people used to read blogs. You wouldn't go to the blog. You'd click the subscribe to RS, RSS, and usually, people usually had an application called an RSS reader. So, like Apple News... Uh, or uh, I think Google has one, Google Play News. Uh, Google News probably, it's a, that Google might do, Google does a lot of weird things. Uh, but uh, they probably use AMP, which is probably is an RSS. Uh, but anyway, back in the olden days, People had apps that subscribed to, to those feeds, those XML, those RSS XML files. Is it rude to burp on a podcast, vid, vidcast? I didn't, you know, expel or anything. like. Just, but you, anybody who was paying attention, which is nobody. Uh, uh, your podcast then shows up on the phone or the computer or whatever. They still have something that's like it. Uh, I, they call them podcatchers now. And they, but they use that same technology to say, oh, a thing is available. Podcast just got uploaded. Uh, I'm going to let the person who's subscribed know that a new one just got uploaded. Uh, and then you get a little flex in your schedule. So, you know, normally you come out every Wednesday. If you come out Wednesday after Wednesday morning, you come out Wednesday afternoon, you know, people will be like, oh, it's not there. I really want to listen to that podcast. I really like that person who podcasts. Uh, oh, but there it is in the afternoon. Yay. They're very excited. And they can listen to it the next morning or whatever. Uh, why that might be bad is they subscribe to it. They never have to come back to your website. So you got to let them know. If you want them to come back to your website, let them know. Say, hey, come back to the website every once in a while. We miss you. Podcast hosting. So many people do it. It's, you know, they say uh, when there's a gold rush, uh, it's the best thing to do is to get into the shovel and pick selling business. These people shall sell shovels and picks. Uh, Libsyn, uh, that's what we use. Uh, then I just heard of a new one called Simplecast. Uh, while during the thing, somebody came up afterward and was like, hey, have you heard of Simplecast? I was like, no, I have not heard of it. So there's 7,000 of these things. And he was like, yeah, it's really good. It's $12, $12 a month. No, 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 no. Uh, and they showed me their stats package. He was like, yeah, it's about the same as Libsyn's. No, it's not. Libsyn has crappy stats. Simplecast has awesome stats. So, yeah. Uh, and it's less. And they're unlimited. So so maybe we'll switch. Who knows? Uh, your move, Libsyn. Show notes. Uh, when you're uploading these things to your blog, uh, and then you make a blog post or whatever, wherever you do it. Uh, they say uh, for search engine optimization purposes to create a list of show notes. Uh, take some photos while you're recording. Uh, make a written transcript if you can. Uh, I, do, uh, I do a script for my first portion of the show and then uh, I just put that script as part of my show notes. Include links to the sites and the articles that you've referenced. Uh, I do that on our blog and you should be able to see it. Uh, I don't know, I haven't done much YouTube, in, but I suppose I'll be putting links there too, or maybe a link to our blog post. So uh, anyway, that's more for search engine. It helps, I think it's helpful because, you know, people will see it and maybe read it uh, and be like, oh, hey, what was that thing they talked about? And then they can find it there. Uh, but mostly it's for search engine optimization. It's for robots, basically. Robots like to read. Gosh, they read a lot. Statistic. Everybody likes a good statistic. Uh, and I found this one on the internet, on the Twitter, on the Twitter box. Uh, and believe it or not, uh, it's not outrage, it's excitement. 
Since early 2015, more than 1 billion episodes have been downloaded with Podcast Addict. That's a podcatcher. Uh, that's more than 76,000 years worth of content. Uh, and just recently, uh, like the last couple of weeks or so, iTunes just surpassed 50 billion podcast downloads. That's pretty good. Uh, so lots of people are, and so I'm going to wing on this. Uh, so in 2014, iTunes had like 14 billion. You know, podcasting is a little bit, of, it's, you know, where it's like podcasting, it's like, you know, 12 years old now as a, as a fad. Uh, so going from like 14 billion to 50 billion in four years, big, de big deal. It's it's uh, it is taking off. People are people are more people are listening, or the same number of people are listening to more. It's more likely more people are listening, not a lot more, but more. Phase five. That's the last phase, the final phase. This is the one. This is the one where I tell you how to get rich quick. Not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. That was Albert Einstein. He would know, right? He knows about numbers. He's a numbers guy. Marketing. This is how you make money, people. Pretty much everything that you want to make money at requires some kind of marketing. Uh, you, being in the right place at the right time, or... Uh, Letting it's about make it's about you know if you make a better mousetrap people will be the path to your door, but they need to know where your door is. Uh, that's wise if you think about it. So the best way to make money off your podcast is to already have an audience of people and then give them a podcast with a money making thing in it. Uh, I'll show you what some of those are. Uh, the world we live in nowadays is uh, either people give you money up front for a thing. You know, uh, if they want ice cream cone, they give you $10 now for an ice cream cone. They give you $10 and then you give them an ice cream cone. Uh, or with media, people don't want to pay for it. Uh, people are like, I'm not going to give you $10 for your ice cream cone. Uh, I will instead read your ice cream cone for free. And it's up to you to find a way to make money off that. Really, people are really cruel. I can't believe that people would do that. But that's what value we place. And, it's, and people wonder why the world is in such a state. But that's the value we place on knowledge. Uh, zero dollars so we got to find hacks around that and one of the, the most common way is to build an audience on free shit an audience of people that like free shit and then somehow someone will will pay you money to advertise their product that they can't take for free uh, really we have a screwed up society but that's what we're stuck with, uh, honestly, people. Uh, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, uh, they will help you get your podcast out there and in front of people. Social media, uh, if you're good at it, you can make your audience bigger. Uh, there's another way to do it is uh, make a little sponsorship advertisement things. Uh, swap them with another podcaster. Uh, you try to generate crossover, get their audience interested in your podcast, get your podcast audience interested in their podcast. Uh, and then interviews, uh, get people on your show uh, that people want to hear other than you, <laughs> which apparently... Eh, so, uh, and the biggest one is everybody wants to interview a celebrity. So, uh, really, if you look at this, this is, this is how the 1% gets to be the 1% because people don't want to hear about people that aren't celebrities. So the people who already are celebrities get more celebrity. Uh, this is how hierarchies get happened. Uh, so we should reevaluate that. And it's not on the content producing end. A lot of people think, oh, it's those content producers. It's their fault. It's not their fault. 
uh, it's not my fault. Uh, you want the media that's comforting. You want to go to the place you already go to. And uh, you want to hear about the people you already know. Uh, because that's comforting. Can I tell you the number of times I've read The Hobbit? I've read The Hobbit like 9,000 times. I've seen the movie like 6 billion times. It's not that interesting. But I kept reading it because I was 12 years old and it was the best thing that had ever happened to me in all of my 12 years. It's how, it's what people are. And, uh, and that sucks because it's hard to break out of. Uh, but that's why we have marketing. Marketing and, and marketers don't get enough credit uh, because their job is to get people to break out of those patterns. Uh, marketers are the ultimate culture warriors and they get no respect for it and we think they're, they're like one level lower than lawyers, uh, but they're amazing people and who do a job that is harder than any other job that I can think of right now other than scrubbing poop off the floor. Direct monetization. Uh, you can ask the people that listen to your podcast, you can remind them that you're poor and don't make any money and that the only way you do make money is when people who consume your product pay for your product. Uh, Patreon. Uh, let's just say patreon.com slash FFS podcast. That's one way you could uh, make sure I can pay my rent this month. Uh, GoFundMe, same thing. Kickstarter, same thing. Not for me, but for other people. You set one of those up. Remind people in your podcast. Uh, more difficult, uh, affiliate promotion. Audible.com, Blue Apron. People like that. Uh, there's others. Harry's Shave Club, I think. Uh, whatever. Uh, look them up. Look for podcast affiliate. Do a Google search, podcast affiliate. Uh, thousands of them, maybe not, maybe like five. Uh, they will pay you uh, if you generate uh, a subscription for them. So audible.com, you can sign up for an account today uh, for your podcast and uh, create an ad. You, you can even record the ad. I think maybe they have sample ads you can download or build off of. Uh, and then they give you a link. Uh, you can even, it doesn't even have to be a podcast, just be a, blo a blog post. Uh, they give you a link. Say, go to audible.com, this link, sign up, you get $15 every time somebody signs up using your link. Same thing with Blue Apron. Uh, paid memberships. Uh, Savage Lovecast does this. Uh, they're amazing, wonderful people. Dan Savage. Uh, uh, the, anyway, producer Nancy Hartunian taught me a lot about podcasting. Bless her heart. Uh, uh, you can, they do that. They, uh, have paid memberships. You can get like extended cuts of Savage Love. Um, a lot of places do that, you know, five, you know, Gimlet Media, um, some other places. I can't think of their names. Pay them $5 a month, $10 a month. You get a wide assortment of, you know, special cuts, things like that. We do a thing on our Patreon, uh, not a lot these days because we don't have any patrons, but when we do, uh, we'll start doing it some more. Uh, doing shorter versions. That's my, that's my you know, real kicker. Doing a shorter version of the podcast uh, because a lot of times people don't have that much time. They're like, oh, geez, uh, just give me the highlights. Highlights real. Podcast highlights real. Uh, and then uh, outtakes. Take the funny bits. Take the stupid bits that, that were like, oh, God, that's hilarious, but I can't possibly. Yeah, that goes in the outtakes. Uh, but you can only get it for X amount of dollars. Uh, hardcore sponsorships, mid-roll, advertise cast, podcast one, radio tale. Uh, they will pay you real money to run an ad in your podcast. There's only one hitch. You got to have listeners. Uh, so uh, they got a little thing. They got a little thing. I'm pointing to this. I should be pointing to this. They got a thing. How many downloads per episode? Uh, let's say you have 25,000 downloads per episode over, you know, 30 days or whatever. Uh, how many 20, 30 second pre-roll spots would you include? You know, they suggest two. Uh, how many 60 second mid-roll spots would you include? Let's say three. You know, you got hour long show every 20 minutes. You have an ad. How many episodes per year? Let's say you're a hard worker, 52. That's what they suggest. You could make that much money, uh, you know, between, you know, 60 and 110,000 a year. 
uh, you know, that's their thing. Maybe you couldn't, but, you know, maybe that's what Tim Ferriss makes. Uh, that's what they suggest, you know. That's, that'd be awesome. I don't, I don't see any reason why they'd be wrong. But this is the thing. So uh, Zip Bang Wow has a podcast called Four Finger Shotguns, which I host. And it basically, I, I go around, to, I ask people who are doing tech in Seattle, I'm like, hey, what's up with tech ruining Seattle? And uh, I get, you know, maybe, you know, really I get 20 weekly views. Sometimes it bumps up to 50. But let's pretend I had 100. You know, I like to you know, reach for the stars. Let's say I'm, you know, I, I, I don't like to have a lot of advertisements. I have a shorter show. Uh, I, only, I don't try only be a half hour and I don't like to have it packed for life, but so I'll run an advertisement. Sure. I don't like to work that much. You know, I like to take a, a couple weeks off. You know, maybe I do 48 episodes a year. I can make, you know, 54 to $90 a year. So clearly I need to change one of these numbers and more likely than not, it's the difference between 100 weekly viewers and 25,000 weekly viewers. So it's not, it's, you can make money from podcasting. It's getting to 25,000 viewers. That's the hard part. Libsyn has a podcast. They probably get 25,000 viewers <laughs> in their podcast. I spit, I'm sorry, it's on the lens, it's fine. So uh, in February 2018, they're, uh, the Feed podcast, they do a stats breakdown. And uh, the first stat they do is they say of the podcasts that got more than like three downloads or something like that, uh, they, they pull out a median. And for, for this month, it was 138 downloads. 50%, only 50% of the podcasts they host get more than 138 downloads. 20% of them get more than 1,100 downloads. 10% get more than 3,100 downloads. 5% get more than 7,500 downloads. And only 2% uh, get more than 1,800. And 1%, only 1% 1 get more than 33,000 downloads. So, uh, so, yeah, you can make money uh, if you can get an audience. Getting that size of an audience is the trick. And I include these numbers not because not to bum you out not to say don't try but just to manage your expectations you know the, because you know i'm not gonna say all these inspiring quotes you know be yourself uh do a thing uh nothing could go wrong <laughs> and then you you know because it's really well known that people are obsessive about their stats uh, you know, it's if you imagine people who sit and uh, click the refresh button to see how many new people like their post on Instagram or whatever, uh, that's you know, uh, it's a long game. Podcasting, it's a long game, and don't expect it to pay off on day one or day 20 or day 100 or even you know, let's talk day thousand and still manage those expectations. But there are intangible rewards that make that journey worth it. Uh, those intangible rewards are if you already have an audience that you serve through a blog, uh, that you may connect with uh, over uh, Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, uh, you can think of podcasting as an extension to that already existing social media strategy. So it's just another way to engage with people you're already engaged with. Or if you want to open up that style of engagement to new types of engagement, uh, where like right now I'm talking to you over a video, that's an exciting new thing. It's a new way of getting to know me. I previously only did writing in the written word I published on newsprint. Uh, now here I am on video with, you know, warts and all. Uh, but it's an exciting thing for me anyway. <laughs> Outreach, attention, community, 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 and entertainment. Uh, all of these things are way we engage with each other. And they're all good, they're all wonderful. Stakeholder communications. Uh, if you have stakeholders, uh, either through, uh, this was uh, 
the presentation I did was for the Impact Hub. Uh, there's a lot of nonprofits there, and one of the buzzwords they use a lot is stakeholders. Stakeholders is just your, the people that you work with, work for, or work against. People who have skin in the game, uh, stakeholders. Uh, a lot of organizations want to talk with people that they work against even, or not against, uh, that, that's too combative. People who have uh, goals that are not necessarily in, in, you know, not necessarily even parallel, uh, non-aligned goals, pulling in different directions. Uh, but sometimes you maintain communications and you say, this is why I'm pulling in the other direction. Uh, I'm doing it for good reasons. And ultimately that communication, one of the things we're learning as we live in this more polarized world, what makes the polarization worse there are some people we're never going to agree with. What makes that worse is not talking civilly about why we disagree. Uh, when we, uh, I'm not going to say what those uh, contentious issues are, but if think of contentious issue, and there are some of us who are always going to be one way or the other on it, and, and, and we're never going to change. Uh, there's a lot of people who say, oh, everybody changes. Some people take that to the grave. Uh, and then, uh, but we can still communicate with each other. And uh, if we communicate civilly and in, in, in positive, affirming ways, we can make those disagreements less painful. We can make our disagreements disagreements and not arguments. Uh, yeah, you can do that through a podcast or through a vidcast. Interpersonal communication skill development. That's what I got out of podcasting uh, because it requires me to ask a lot of questions of people. Uh, it requires me to reach out. Uh, it requires me to make mistakes. Mistake making is one of the greatest learning tools ever invented, uh, discovered. Um, it takes a lot of mistakes to become perfect. Uh, I have not made enough mistakes yet to become perfect. I will keep making mistakes. I will make terrible mistakes. The reason I'm recording this is because I made a mistake. I always aim to do better. Learning that is an important life lesson that podcasting teaches very well. Uh, one of my favorite video game characters, Zen Yada in Overwatch. He's a, a, a Zen robot. <laughs> He's a robot who practices Zen. He's an artificially intelligent ro robot. Zen Yada, one of, his, one of his sayings is, pain is an excellent teacher. He talks about a lot of those things. Uh, because he's an incredibly violent dude. Uh, he's a murder bot. I love murder bots. I have a thing for murder bots in my heart. Building a mailing list. I don't know. I read that on the internet. Somebody was like, oh my God, you can build a mailing list with a podcast. It's the best thing since sliced cheese. I don't know. People get crazy about mailing lists. I, f mailing lists freak me the f crap out. Uh, don't ever put me on your mailing list without asking me because I swear to God, I will get so upset and I will immediately assume that your product is terrible because of it. Uh, privacy, it's not just for breakfast anymore. Search engine optimization, it's the big thing. It's so robots can read your stuff. Uh, they like stuff. Um, so one of the cool new things that I also read about is Google is going to start using their voice, uh, their voice activation uh, neural networks on podcasts. Uh, that and and they're going to start treating uh, pod, audio podcasts as a top level search term. Uh, which I believe, I don't know, I don't read the articles, I just read the headlines, which is why 
we live in the shitty world we live in because nobody reads articles anymore. They just read the headlines. Uh, Google is going to start using their their voice learning algorithms on podcasts and and indexing them according, accordingly. So uh, so search engine optimization in the old world was you do a transcript of your podcast so robots can read it. Well, not anymore. Robots are going to be listening to your podcast. You should still do SEO for the time being. Uh, promote your product to, or service to new clients or upsell the clients you already have. If you have a client list and you release a new product, hey, why not make a podcast? Uh, and then I'll just say at ZipBang, wow, we would be happy to help you record something that uh, you would then send to those new clients so you could let them know you got a new product. Podcasting is a long game. It is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Not in dollars, anyway. Uh, what podcasting will do for you right away is open up new opportunities to enrich yourself and the people you communicate with. Uh, everybody wins uh, when we communicate in new ways. Uh, sometimes the old ways... Uh, writing is still good. Writing's always going to be good. Writing's awesome. Uh, sometimes people need a... a uh, sometimes people need something to break them out. Like remember, I was talking about marketers. Marketers are the people that break people out of patterns. Uh, marketing is breaking people out of their patterns. Uh, sometimes people need that, and if somebody's eyes are glazed over, maybe you can get it with a you know like one of those air horns to the ears. That's how I like to think of my voice as an air horn to the ear. So that's the presentation. I should have waited to say that then. And then and then I do this. I miss this guy. I really do. I miss Steve Jobs. Uh, asshole that he was. Uh, so I'm just going to say one more thing. But it's really three more things. Support local media. Uh, there's five. There's a, a, so after the show, like five more people came up to me and said, "I have a podcast." People that I work in the same building with. So there's like ten of them, uh, and but the five that I know of that that I've talked to people, uh, Hubcast, Sarah Studer's uh, cast web or podcast for the Impact Hub Seattle. Uh, is great. Uh, we're doing a kind of a series on how the Impact Hub got built and how uh, interviews with the people that built it. Uh, so everything from uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to remember their names, but Brian and Lindsay and Shala, uh, early investors, uh, Bob Mason, who uh, his family owned the building for the last three generations uh, and still does. Uh, and uh, who else, who else, who else? Uh, the, the fellows, hopefully the fellows at the Convoy Coffee. Uh, and then uh, they're gonna, they're, we just started recording a daily uh, hub date, is what I call it. I don't know if they're gonna go with that. A daily hub date. Uh, but it's an update, it's, it's their uh, weekly newsletter, uh, weekly hub date. It's their weekly newsletter that, uh, in audio form. It's very exciting, uh, it's got good energy. And then what's next is uh, Sue Mason from What's Next Washington. Uh, her podcast, which is uh, around, uh, let's see if I can get this right, around uh, just as involved and previously incarcerated people who, uh, uh, it's, it's, her organization, What's Next Washington, uh, is trying to reimagine what the justice system, what a just justice system would look like, and hopefully, uh, will do things to actually implement that. Uh, they have many plans for actually implementing that, and if society is willing, let you know they're they're ready to to roll up their sleeves and get to work. Uh, she talks with uh, previously incarcerated justice involved people who, uh, who are doing that work, and they talk about what that looks like and why what we're currently doing is horrible and just creates a world with m more crime 
uh, and suffering uh, for everybody. So uh, it's a wonderful pod. It's really uh, if there's ten pod, if there's if there's five podcasts, everybody would f- be forced to listen to. And God th- help us. Thankfully, we don't live in that world. Uh, but if we did, this would be one of them. Uh, and uh, it's wonderful. It really, it truly is. Uh, I can't. Believe that. That's a horrible thing to say. You should just you should listen to it because it's wonderful. <laughs> Image of the future. Uh, this is Malenko from uh, the Pomegranate Institute's podcast. It, I've never met Malenko, but uh, but he but I've I've heard him on his podcast. He's a wonderful he's a wonderful person. Uh, he interviews people about. Uh, uh, it's about uh, it's it's like architecture and design of a better world. Uh, so again, a, a very cool stuff. Uh, uh, I'm not a good advocate for other people. I'm not even a good advocate for myself. Content strategy interviews. Larry Larry Swanson's podcast. Uh, he uh, he's the massage guy. He he's a masseuse. He comes into the massage, but he's also a content strategist. And he, he does uh, he does a podcast where he interviews local uh, business owners and asks them about their business and and how they interact with their customers. And then uh, force finger shotguns. Uh, it's a there's comedy. There's comedy bits, and also is where I go around uh, Seattle talking to people working in tech and say, what's up with people in tech ruining Seattle? Why are you doing it, man? What's, what do you got against Seattle? And we have cool conversations. Uh, you would think they just tell me to go away, but they don't, they talk to me. It's really neat. Uh, and then uh, I would just like to, you know, put in a bid that please support local businesses. Uh, uh, People uh, have to pay rent and buy food. And in Seattle, rent and food are crazy expensive. So, uh, so it's cool that we have like a little barter system going, but barter doesn't pay my rent. Uh, Zip Bang Wow is a local audio visual production business, and uh, we would love to help you solve your problems creating audio visual stuff because we're good at it and then uh i would like to because i'm bad at apparently (laughs) marketing myself uh i would like to uh i don't want to be a marketer i'm not particularly good at it i don't know i'm going to try and learn but uh, I think what I what I am good at is I'm good at producing. I'm good. I'm I'm a good producer. Uh, I I build things and I make things, and I can take uh, I can take content and present it neatly, nicely, funly. I'm I'm not terrible at it. Uh, I can learn new technologies to present content and do them. Gosh, I'm bad with words. You would think you'd be like, wow, this weirdo started the, yeah. Uh, I have theories about why somebody who's so super socially inept is able to create something that was a social cool thing. I don't know, but I know, you know, it's not like anybody else at the onion was cool. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, uh, not a hip bunch of critters, uh, nerds, every one of them. Uh, anyway, I'd like to create a Seattle podcasting network. There's a, when I first started this podcasting business, I did search for Seattle podcasts and like two of them showed up. There's way more than two podcasts in Seattle, but there's no central, uh, clearinghouse for them. And wouldn't it be cool if, uh, all the Seattle podcasts were presented in a way almost like a radio station or a television station and good heavens knows our current crop of radio and television stations leaves much to be desired except for uh, KUOW which is wonderful 
and KEXP, which is even more wonderful. Uh, and and then there's some stuff I'm missing out. I'm, but you know, the loss of uh, KPLU was was uh, was harsh. Uh, the, we're losing the good stuff, and Sinclair, those Yahoos, they don't even deserve a nice word like Yahoos. Those uh, uh, Scraggle Hammers. They're just uh, they don't deserve our our trust. The people that do the journalism there uh, are amazing and wonderful people. Uh, the, it's the business owners. They don't deserve to run. So let's create a cooperative. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, where we all own it and we, we, all, we all pitch in and we all benefit. Uh, that would be cool, right? So let's do it. Uh, email me, johnny at zipbangwow.com. J-O-N-N-I-E. Uh, and then the last thing, uh, I'd like to just, just thank the, the people at the Washington State Podcasting Facebook group. It's a WA State Pod Facebook group. Um, just wonderful folks. Uh, very, very gracious and uh, open with sharing their knowledge and, uh, and their support. And I, I can't think, you're wonderful. Uh, you've been a... a You've been a great help to me personally, and I sent everybody <laughs> from the lunch and learn there. Uh, so we're going to be busy, uh, but it's fine. It's going to, you know, we, we teach people, and then they learn, and then they teach people, and that's how a community gets built. It's very exciting. So uh, that's my thing. Go here and sign up, and we'll continue the conversation there. Uh, you can always go to our website, zipbangwow.com. Uh, on our blog, every podcast that we produce that gets released gets released on our blog. So it's kind of a clearinghouse. That's the start of that network. Uh, you know, uh, better it'll, there'll be a better interface for it. Uh, you know, when I learn Python. Uh, so uh, so that's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, uh, hopefully this worked, and uh, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. And thank you for listening. And uh, I already, I've talked to a couple people about Lunch and Learn Podcasting 2.0 uh, or uh, Lunch and Learn Podcasting 201. Uh, the initial, uh, definitely send me input. Uh, I'm going to send an email to everybody who, who did the thing and offer you the opportunity to sign up for our, I'm going to send you this link to this video and I'm going to offer you the opportunity to sign up for a cast and crew newsletter. Uh, so that you can maintain contact with us. Uh, so that'll be coming, and actually it will have already come because that'll have the link to this. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's it. There was something else. I was saying a thing, and then I got lost. Oh, well, it happens. So that's it. That's the whole shkloboobooey. And uh, thank you for thank you for thank you to everyone who came to the lunch and learn. Thanks again to the Impact Hub for uh, giving us the space and for helping us uh, accommodate all of the wonderful people who came. And and thank you again to everybody who came. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It was wonderful. I had so much fun. I want to do it again right away. Oh yeah, uh, we're gonna do it again uh, as soon as we can because they're not that expensive to put on and they're a lot of fun to do. And I promise not to take so long next time. <laughs> I, it was an hour and a half. I don't, God knows how long this one is. How long is this one? Oh, yeah, this one's an hour and a half, too. I'll figure that out. I'll get better. Well, I mean, the next one will have more other people. So anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, this is Johnny from Zip Bang, dot, Zip Bang Wow uh, signing off. Uh, bye. It's, I'm going to... Hits stop. Beep.